Good afternoon. Okay. Thank you for joining us. I'm Robert Baylor, Director of Communications at NUCA. Welcome to our latest webinar Wednesday, sponsored by NUCA Sustaining Partner CloudRig. First, before we begin, some webinar housekeeping for attendees. Today's webinar will be recorded. It will be available on NUCA's YouTube channel and via our webinar webpage, both of which can be accessed via NUCA.com. All participants are muted upon entry. Phone participants can use star six to mute and unmute themselves. Questions will be asked at the end of the presentation. To ask a question, you can submit a written question at any time using the chat feature, and I'll read them at the conclusion of our discussion. Now let's get started. Utility contractors are caught between a lot and a hard place. There's massive demand for your services, but you're hard pressed to meet it. Contractors, especially small growing subs, lack skilled labor, especially the foreman and superintendent levels. Where people are lacking, better processes and technology can help. In this NUCA webinar, Aves Corporation, a fast growing 100 employee utility contractor based in Washington, D.C., and CloudRig, a construction technology company, will present how they're powering Aves' profitability and growth. Aves relies up upon CloudRig to set the operating cadence and to unify the entire company execs, ops, PMs, superintendents, foremen, and finance around financial, production, and schedule targets. If you're looking for a better way to manage your construction business to help foremen and superintendents perform at a higher level or just outsmart your competition, this webinar will be for you. This webinar will be presented by AVE CEO Stan Heidman and JP Spence, CEO of CloudRig. Stan, I turn the webinar over to you. Well, thank you, Bob. Thank you, uh, Nuka, for, for having us and giving us the time to, uh, to talk and kind of share our experiences. Uh, again, my name is Stan Heitman. I am the CEO of Aves Construction. Uh, Aves Construction is a, a utility subcontractor. Uh, we focus on water main, sewer, and storm drain. And like Bob said, we have, uh, we have about 100 employees. Um, we're based in the, the D.C. area. Uh, I came prior to, to joining the company, and the company is about uh, 14 years old. Prior to joining the company, I came from kind of the tech and finance uh, area. So that's what I brought to the company. That's what I'm trying to add. We'll talk more about that. But again, thank you for, for having me. Yeah, thanks for thanks for joining, Stan. Um, I'm JP Spence. Uh, I'm one of the, the co-founders of, of CloudRig. We're a construction technology company, also based out of DC. We're on a mission to equip self-performed contractors to build and deliver more safely, profitably, and efficiently with modern tools. Uh, we have a special focus on utilities along with civil and earthwork contractors. Um, and uh, we've got customers from, from Seattle to Baltimore. And so today our goal is really to let kind of Aves uh, show off uh, and, 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 and ideally everyone leaves here 30 minutes from now with some inspiration about how to run their own businesses better. We've had lots of conversations with contractors over the past two years. No one's hurting for work, but uh, people are often struggling to improve their core operations and, and drive profitability. That's a difficult challenge. It, means finding the right people and then guiding them with the right process and empowering them with the right tools. Uh, we've asked Stan to join us because in less than a year at Aves, he's made a massive amount of progress in all three areas. And he has a lot to share on how to use technology to get the most out of limited resources and to compete with big entrenched players in your markets. So um, Stan, thanks very much for uh, the intro to to Abe's. I'm I'm hoping you can tell us uh, you have some really lofty ambitions. Where are you trying to take the company, um, and how are you trying to get there? Well, of course, you know we're we're, we're trying to grow as a subcontractor. You know, you're trying to um, grow as a subcontractor, get to that uh, general contractor space. But you know, as you mentioned in your intro. Uh, Probably across the country, but you know, especially where we are, uh, there's a ton of work, right? So we're we're in a position where you know there's not a ton of business development. There's not a ton of like you know where am I going to find find business? You know how do I grow that that top line? But where where I want to you know take the company is really lean you know heavily on on data and technology. But I also understand that I have to 
really work on the processes and procedures of the company because we want to we want to of course lower the cost structure uh become more nimble you know kind of pursue that you know art of multiplicity and and find that kind of street to erp uh state and you know what i mean by that is we want to get to that point of hey number one we have really good foreman we have really good people but the seamlessness from you know all of the transactions that occur from payroll to production to you know all the admin is is flowing from the street to our ERP. So it's it's a lot of work, but we also know, and we're all you know in this together that we've got to build on our our processes and procedures first before we grow. Yeah. Um... Makes sense. I, a, a wise man says uh, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Like maybe your maybe your maybe your challenges aren't quite so visceral, um, but obviously, like you faced them when you stepped in to Aves. Walk us through some of these challenges that 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 are standing in between you and this ultimate objective. Well, it's you know it's it's basic. You know, everyone faces the same challenges. You know, I always kind of call it kind of like the trinity of business, right? The trinity of transformation. You have people, process, and technology. You know, those are the three key uh, components. You know, with people, you can also say culture, which obviously we all know that culture is uh, very important. You know, culture is, you know, hard to see, kind of hard to identify, but you know it when you have it, right? Uh, when I came on board, I could tell quickly that people were great. Uh, we were really good at our, our uh, uh, doing the job. But almost, almost too good. And I know that that sounds funny, but I could tell that we would do anything to get the job done and we would do anything to do the job right. All of that sounds wonderful, right? But from a, uh, you know, timing and profitability standpoint, we had a lot of work to do. So, you know, we had to add on to, you know, great job quality to okay, how are we going to become, you know, more profitable and how are we going to use, you know, data and technology to get us there? But I could see those challenges as I, as I came on board. Yeah. And, and it makes complete sense. Conversations we have every day. What was the impact of those to like the Aves bottom line, right? You've talked about, um, we're focused on profitability. We're focused on making sure that financially we're ending up where we need to. And it's not just the customer that's getting what they need out of this interaction. Like, what was the impact of, of the skills gap of, you know, perhaps underbaked process, older technology on, on Abe's, your operations and your, your profits? Yeah. You know, let, let's be honest, uh, you know, you and I have been to get together for 8 months. So we have, you know, invested in cloud rig 8 months ago. Um, so, and we have seen uh, profitability again, the top line is doing well. Uh, the bottom line is improving. Are we are we there where we want to be? Of course, of course not. Um, but what we have done is opened up our eyes to um, our cost, our cost structure. You know what it means to have a profitable um, job. You know we have all of our assets now. You know in our job we actually put hours to our assets, so we understand you know kind of how we're utilizing that. But maybe one of the most important things is, you know, change orders, uh, you know, with the help of cloud rig, we can. Uh, notate, take pictures, uh, journal, all the things that are happening during the day and we are capturing uh, change orders that we really struggled with in the previous, you know, in previous time, previous years. Um, because I know that because I'm talking to, you know, my partner, who's, uh, you know, the owner of the company. And and others in project management, they're like, oh my gosh, like we have probably a sixty percent increase in chain or change orders. So you know, with that, obviously, is adding to the bottom line, and our ability to go back and have all of these insights that we're able to give to you know ourselves and our clients has helped us a lot. But we have a lot of a lot of work to do uh, to really find that profitability. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's you know been a massive focus for us over over the first several months of of working together, and we've seen the progress and um, your your documentation of what's happening on jobs and ability to turn that into managing jobs better is 
is as high as, as anyone that we work with. Um, I think what is really exciting about working with Abe's in particular is that um, you're not just focused on what has happened in the past, right? On describing what was going on on a job yesterday. You're also trying to get to the point where you can run a much more um, predictable machine every day, week, and month. Like, talk to us a little bit about your vision for a more prescriptive model of management at Apes. Yeah, so let, let's go back and, and kind of talk about, you know, our old kind of fundamentals of, of data analysis. You know, you talk about descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive. So what all of that means is, uh, you know, descriptive is, you know, you're telling, you're, you're, you're giving the news, right? You're just reporting and we're all probably good at reporting. You know, we're spitting something out of our ERP. That's descriptive. Um, you know, diagnostic is, okay, what are we going to do about it? Like we have that, what the heck are we going to do about these plus or minus results? And then you have, you know, predictive and that's our forecast. And that's what we, you know, believe is going to happen. Prescriptive is when you really got there, right? Like that's when, like you're really good because prescriptive is, okay, I know what I'm predicting. Now let's change the outcomes, right? Let's make the outcomes what we want it to, to be. Um, so that's how we're kind of, you know, using, you know, using our analysis, but I have to, you know, admit and really tell this story. We were probably even one step prior to descriptive and that was like on pen and paper. So literally like when I came on board, you know, a lot of our payroll, a lot of our uh, production numbers were on the back of a napkin and we were trying to, you know, as we all know, when you do those type of things, you don't do it on Monday afternoon after Monday's activities. You don't do it on Tuesday afternoon after Tuesday's activities. You do it on Friday, you know, when you're going home and you're like, okay, what happened? You know, what, what kind of payroll did I experience? What kind of production? And you can imagine, you know, what kind of challenges that, that uh, presents. So that's where we were. We're really at the descriptive, you know, diagnostic stage right now. We have, you know, added forecasting, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, you know, into our uh, our daily activities and into our, you know, our field software, and that has been amazing. But where we really want to go is that prescriptive, and that's where everyone wants to go. It's like I know our data, I know what we're predicting, but that may not be good enough. I want to change the outcome, and I'm going to be more prescriptive. So that's where we are today. Yeah, makes makes complete sense. I like gaining that complete command over the output in the field and financially based on what you're putting in is 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 really the end goal as far as I understand it. I think to make all this like a little more concrete, we can just jump into some actual software okay. and show how you all run your kind of plan, build, review cadence today. Um, for those curious, uh, this is not actually Abe's data. Um, it's highly representative, but there's no need to start screenshotting uh, unit prices and budgets uh, because we've changed all of this. Um, but but this is about as this is about as close as it gets um, in terms of seeing software live in action for um, for Abe's and and for companies like Abe's. And so. Um, I'll get started. This is this is uh, the cloud rig customer environment, and our goal again is to allow Stan as CEO right off the bat to tie his corporate ambition, right, his revenue targets for the company for the year, all the way down into daily plans for the field, without drowning in administrative work. Um, and so we can start right there. We'll start with the revenue forecast section up at the top. And this is where Stan can review his daily and his weekly and his monthly targets for the company right here at the top. By clicking on view details, he can actually see which jobs are driving his revenue attainment in the near term. So that's this forecast column for all of his active jobs currently. Each of these is itself built up from and individual jobs look ahead. So let's click into the look ahead for a specific job, this water main replacement. 
which Stan is counting on for $400,000 this month. So we'll come to water main replacement and then into the actual look ahead. This look ahead is a four week plan, which ties high level job tasks to responsible parties, to specific bid items, to production targets for the fields and related financial outcomes, right? So you can see as I change my production targets, how that impacts the revenue that I'm gonna realize from this job. So really what you're seeing happen is the entire company is being unified around a set of field and financial targets and everyone's seeing the information they need to see to go get their job done in a way that's gonna maximize profits for, for Aves. Stan, we talk a lot about the field taking its share of responsibility for managing production, right? Not just making this um, something the PM drives to a, to a job site once every two weeks and tells the guys you're doing good or you're doing bad, um, but actually having the field see, own, and manage to these targets. What does having these targets right in front of them do to a foreman's ability to actually plan for and hit that target based on what you've seen? Well, the, the, the first thing that I saw early on is and this is with you know my company and, and you know our our uh, projects and teams is when you give them a target and you give them a daily number a weekly number and that's you know production payroll cost and that is right in front of them and I say this all the time it's amazing it it works like if you put it in front of them they will achieve it when you when you speak in you know generalities and you speak and you don't you know you don't have uh, text and you don't have notes and you're just speaking out loud, I swear it just it doesn't get done. But when it's right here in front, uh, these things get done and everyone understands it. But it's not just the foreman; you know, it's the supervisors and, and the project managers. And uh, I talked earlier about kind of like the art of multiplicity. You know, and we're we're doing that with cloud rig is doing things once and then being able to use it in multiple uh sources afterwards. You know, like it's it's going to uh you know a daily journal for a general contractor, it's going to an inspector, uh it's going to forecasting, it's going to billing, and then it's finally like going into a whip report and then finally like closing out. We can use all of these same data points for multiple uses. And that's what we're trying to do, right? You know, that we're trying to lower the cost structure, but using using data to our advantage. So that's how we're we're using it today, JP. Yeah, ex exactly. We CloudRig takes the bid or the budget and then we try to do everything else so that with the same inputs you get way more output, right? We're not loading up a PM with a bunch of you know extra administrative work. We're helping him use that information in more places. Um, you know, one feature we added at your request, CloudRig goes a step further even than helping you set the plan, right? So we help you plan smarter too. So for very concretely, 12 inch pipe, right? We can see that we've set this production target at hundred feet a day. Um, in one click, I can see that historically, we've only achieved an average of 60 feet a day, right? So this is a production challenge we need to address or we're gonna risk missing this target. Um, and Stan, I saw you adjusted, you, you all adjusted a look ahead for one of your big jobs just this week in response to this exact alert. What is marrying past and future, kind of historicals and plan all in one screen done for your PM's ability to set smart targets? Well, our, our PM's, uh, you know, we're very optimistic and, you know, I could see our, because what we do, at Aves is we have kind of a, a corporate ambition and and what you know that to everyone else that is a annual annual budget like this is what we're this is what we're targeting this is going to you know uh, meet all of our investments and our ambitions and this is where we want to be and then of course you have your forecast and then we even go a deeper as we have a monthly forecast and a weekly forecast and our our PMs who are doing the forecasting. We're getting a little, you know, overly optimistic and we have the ability to say, hey, we're doing, you know, water main work, you know, in the middle of the street. And, you know, they're, they're putting in, hey, we can do 160, 160 feet of 
uh, a day. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm not sure we've ever done 160 feet a day, but we have the ability to, you know, to use cloud rig, go back to our historical performance, you know, look through, you know, the last, you know, three quarters and say, have we actually ever done this? And what do we average? And then you can kind of kind of true up your numbers, but we want to use all of this data as we talked about before to become, you know, more predictable, you know, more prescriptive and say, hey, guys, this is what we're actually good at. And this is what we could we can do. This is what we can achieve. So that's how we're we're using it. Yeah, and I think that's exactly the right approach, right? It's like to, to, to that point, the prescriptive model is if I if I put these inputs into the machine, whoops, apologies, what outputs do I get out? Yeah. Um, and CloudRig tries to make it easier to diagnose and address that question. Okay, so back in the daily report, right? We've got this. Um, we've got this uh, this six seven report for my water main replacement, and that's where we can easily call out, you know, flags that the field has filed, send comments back and forth, and then mark these for change orders. Mark these to be addressed. Right, and this is where over you know over the lifetime of of the system, you're going to catch and file way more issues because we've tied you know field and office much closer together. Yeah, um, and so that's 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 really the impact of being able to go from plan to to actually building to reviewing all in in just a few clicks. Um, now this is great for a PM that needs this level of detail as a busy executive, you know. Someone like Stan is not necessarily going into every daily report every day. Most of them, I bet, but maybe not every single one, right? He needs to get the insights kind of at his fingertips that he requires to keep tabs on his jobs. So that's where in something like the activities table for this specific job, across all his bid items, we help him keep tabs on how the field is performing in terms of the quantities he's realizing, how we're tracking against budget, where we're earning and burning crew hours and thus, and thus gaining and fading profit. And even for a given pay period, you know, how much his company is owed for the work that they've completed. So again, this principle of multiplicity, you give CloudRig bid or the budget um, and the app handles the rest, it helps you just focus on the process. And then finally, CloudRig rolls that up for Stan across the company, right? So back on the overview page, Here's a snapshot of how Aves is performing in terms of its key metrics like earned revenue and crew hours earned or burned across the company and for individual jobs. Stan, you inspired this overview page. You dragged it out of us, you could almost say. What has it done for your ability to, to rapidly get up to speed on what needs your attention every day? That caused a lot of people stress every morning. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. This this is how I this is how I start my this is how I start my day. Um, what you guys have put together is is uh, what we were looking for. You know, kind of that you know command and control center where you could see, hey, what what happened yesterday? I know what we had planned. I know what was you know what we had forecasted, and then you see all of the, uh, you know, the positives and the negatives. And you know, you know, when you're starting your day, this is where I need to go. And then, you know, our PMs and our supervisors, they see it too. That's, this is how they start their morning and they know where they need to go and, you know, close any of these gaps. But, you know, what you guys did, you know, to uplift this quickly was, was pretty amazing because we had a lot of data, you know, like within the project, you know, and, and in all the activities, but rolling that up into a, you know, comprehensive dashboard and then also adding the forecast and then tying, you know, payroll to this. I mean, let me give a little shout out to, to cloud rig. I mean, we just met 8 weeks ago and like I said, we were, we were, you know, writing on the back of the napkin, what our hours, what we thought our hours were each week. And then that would go to, you know, someone that's going to enter a spreadsheet and probably take 2 hours doing that. Then it was going to go to someone that was going to. You know, review it, and then it was going to go to someone that was going to upload it into our payroll system, and then we had to submit that. You know, think of all of those. Today, we are entering our daily payroll into CloudRig. Yes, our PMs and our supervisors are are glancing at it, like, "Hey, this is what our target was." You know, this is this looks correct. Okay, approve, and that is going directly into our ERP and payroll is processed. So we have taken 
a tremendous amount of hours and eliminated it and then increased our accuracy. So that, that has been amazing. Yeah, and I think that's a perfect example of like how technology and process can work hand in hand to help you get the most out of your people, right? It, you, you really kind of need all three. Um, if you're trying to run a plan, build, review cycle um, without any technology to do the grunt work for you, you're living in that spreadsheet land that you described. And it, it almost takes so much time and effort, it's not worth it. It's definitely going to get forgotten and, and done wrong. Um, if you have technology with no process, it sits there, uh, useless and, and unused. Um, but together, they, they massively impact your ability to drive better outcomes with the same amount of input from the same people you had before. Yeah. Um, so the system's doing the grunt work. It's keeping everyone on the same page. It's unifying you from your plan right into the actual outcome of your build and then helping you understand, you know, across the company, what's, what's going well, where do I need to deploy some fixes? Um, who's, who's killing it and, and who needs help. Um, and I think that's, um, you know, we're, we're, we're really pleased that we've been able to, you know, help you achieve some of these things. And, and obviously, um, it's, it's a massive amount of work and effort from, from you all as well. And I, you know, it, I would never claim that this is just a software story. I'm sure that when you first walked in, there was a lot of internal selling to do, um, within the company. So maybe the, the right place to go now is for you to help us understand, like, how do your people react to your proposed new approach? What's it taken you to get to where you are today? Um, you know, I, I made it clear when I, when I came on board, when I walked through the doors is, you know, we're going to work on our process or procedures and we're going to use data and technology to get us there. So, you know, that was my, you know, my mantra coming in. So it was no surprise that that's the type of leader that I was, I was going to be, um, you know, when you're, when you're selling this, you. You obviously have to go through, you know, a couple of gyrations, especially with your senior management team of, you know, do you go big, you know, because we're, we're, we're a subcontractor, you know, do you go big that's going to, you know, tie your ERP or you're going to go big on, uh, you know, the engineering aspect of it, you know, where do you go? I, I met, you know, these guys, JP and, and his management team and, and, you know, really liked uh, number one, where they come from and where they're they're going. Um, and then you think about rolling this out to your, to your foreman who have never had anything like this now, however, but we all know we have phones, right? We all know that we like to stare at our phones and we all like to push buttons. And so, so really, actually, this is all the same thing. You just have to do, you have to do some teaching and learning. And I was most impressed, I guess, with my team that I would say probably in three to four months, we have all of our four men uh, uploading all their information on a daily basis. Um, and that, you know, three or four months may seem like it, that's a long time, but it took, you know, took a lot of training by CloudRig. It took a lot of communication by us of, you know, continually saying, hey, this is gonna make your life easier. You know, you know it's kind of what's in it for them. Uh, but, you know, it took a little bit, but. But we're we're getting there, and now you know they they wear an iPad you know across their across their chest with their their strap, and it's just another appendage, and and that's how they that's how they work, and that's how they enter their their data. So it takes time, but you know everyone kind of knows like that's where we're going, and that's where we have to have to be. So it's it's uh, it's going well, but it is you know it takes some hard work in the beginning. Yeah, and 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 anyone who fools themselves by thinking that technology is going to do everything isn't going to capture the benefits. To be totally honest, yeah. Um, but I, I, I said, I, I, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, the one thing that I think you guys did really well was, um, you know, made things clear and simple. You know, let's let's be honest. We're in the construction business, right? Uh, look, we we can't. We can't have a really busy screen. We can't have, you know, nine thousand, you know, variables on it. The key variables we made we made very clear, um, you know, like in the stack, and and you guys just made it, you know, easy and clear and very doable. So, you know, that that was very helpful too. 
I think that's the, 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 the one thing that we nailed from the start is we always built for the field first and then for the office. Yeah. Um, because we know we can, you know, we can do the integrations, we can, we can play with the data once it's in there to show people what they need to run their companies better. But if you don't have field buy-in, um, it's all useless, right? Garbage in, garbage out. And so we started with the field, we designed for the field. Um, we did a lot of research into how to make the app as simple as possible um, on the tablet, on the phone. And, uh, and the impact has been there. And I think to your point, um, you've done an amazing job internally of, of pushing the why and, um, you know, demonstrating the benefits internally for the company, right? For, for PMs, you know, more change orders for, for the operations team, better documentation in the field for, for, for the finance function, right? Less time moving data around, um, more of a push button to process payroll model, or at least we're getting there. Um, which frees up your finance work to go kind of guide the business and perform value add activity. Um, and so a uh, lot of work, but absolutely, you know, benefits are there. And, and very briefly, before we open it up to, to a couple questions here, um, you know, where we're going next, we're, we're constantly talking about two, two areas with, with Stan and team. One is operations and one is the financial management. So as Stan mentioned, on the financial management side, taking what's happening in the field, not just into payroll, but all the way into the whip um, is, is, is a current focus, right? And really unifying uh, the company from, uh, from, from the street all the way through the ERP and giving finance the operational insight that they require to report correctly and guide the business effectively um, is one big area of focus. And then taking everything in bids and budgets and loading up that look ahead not just with um, production targets and costs, but also the resources required without making PMs spend all day, loading those numbers up manually so that Stan can really see exactly what he's going to get out of his investment in the form of people, in the form of equipment, in the form of materials to help him work towards driving that well-oiled machine. And that really predictive um, machine is, is, is the other big area of focus. And so really excited to keep... Um, to keep unlocking these benefits for him uh, and for the Aves team. If you're interested in talking more to us, the website is cloudrigsoftware.com or shoot me an email at info at cloudrigsoftware.com. And, uh, and uh, you know, Bob, we'd love to take a couple questions. I know we're five minutes over, so, you know, so maybe we cut this off after, after a few and, and people can drag us down individually, but, you know, we'd love to open it up if we've got some, uh, some input from the audience. Thank you, JP. Uh, let's open the webinar to questions. You can use the chat feature to submit a question, and I'll read the question to the presenter. Or if you prefer, unmute yourself, state your name and company, and ask the question directly. Remember to remute yourself after you finish. I've got one question. What was on? I think this might be going to Stan. What was onboarding like? How long did it take to get guys trained up initially, and how long to really start seeing value from the software? You know, we started, we started in August onboarding. Um, I, I believe that it probably took about, uh, you know, two to three months with all of the training and getting all of our foremen to be, be trained and entering their data uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Um, but like I said before, it, it takes continual, you know, communication, a lot of, a lot of training and you know showing the benefits to you know to our field staff of of you know why you do this and what benefit it's going to to give to them but you know we're we're continually working with them so this is not hey here's your ipad go go do it uh you know we have a lot of a lot of videos we have training probably every two weeks and cloud rig is constantly adding new updates and new modules so this is a, this is an ongoing thing, right? This is uh, to get them up to speed. It was probably a quarter, but we're we're in kind of the continual learning path right now. Got another question? I've got I've already got an electronic time card, and I can submit photos from the field. How does Cloud Rig differ from that? Well, it it, it differs a lot. Uh, you know, to be quite honest, I think this is one of their their greatest. 
accomplishments, you know, because what we asked was, hey, it's great, you know, it's great to have, you know, a picture of a time card, or it's great to enter your time, and then it goes into a spreadsheet. But all that is is a digital napkin, right? Uh, what we really needed was enter the time and then suck it into our payroll system. That's what we were trying to get to. And, and I knew that that was a, that was a big ask to them. You know, they are uh, a new company and, and that didn't exist just yet. I think that they uplifted that in probably 2 months. And today, uh, we are entering on a, on a daily basis of the hours by foreman, by crew and our crews are, you know, uh, we have 5 people per crew entering that and that is automatically being processed in payroll. There is no touching that information until that check is printed on a weekly basis. So we have totally streamlined that and it's it's been amazing. Yeah, and that's been an area where it, where AFS has definitely helped us to push and evolve. Um, at this point now we we offer that for you know any ERP that you use, we connect with out of the box before we show up for training. And we run those payroll dry runs, um, you know, before we re we're even there. It's no like three months of paid consulting time to hook up your ERP to our system. Like we're we're a modern technology company. We're big believers that apps that you think should connect, we will connect. Um, and we're not nickel and diming you for integrations that you would expect to exist in other in, in applications you use in every other area of your life. Um, th the only other thing to add here is that you know uh, an electronic time card is great. But the planning capacity is is critical for for self perform excellence, right? So, being able to tie um, targets to your financials, targets to what happens in the field, and then review how you do against those targets. Uh, a simple time card is going to report the news. It's not going to help you make the news. Um, and so that's an area where again, Stan pushed us a ton and and gave us a lot of feedback um, that you know damaged our fragile egos at first, but then we, we were forced to admit was, was the truth, which was that, hey, this was reporting and it wasn't helping him necessarily plan and execute on his objectives more effectively. And so that's been a massive push in 2024. And now it's an area where I think we stand head and shoulders above any other offering in terms of helping you direct the course of your company and not just review where you've come from. I think it's a great segue to this next question, which I really like. It sounds like Aves and CloudRig are working quite closely together. How does the partnership compare to one with a normal software vendor? I, I think that's I think that's to me. Um, you know, I think I think where it is different is we are. I mean, number one, we're both in the same city. We're both in uh, DC, so that obviously is helpful. Um, we we talk a lot together. We meet, you know, once a week, and we, uh, CloudRig has been amazing at, you know, listening to our, you know, what our challenges are, and and believe me, we have a list. We probably have a a, a list of wishes that's about 150 deep, and you know, we we are looking at, hey, what's most valuable? What is going to what is going to help us get there quicker, and what are we going to choose? But that that relationship of of working together, growing together, and it's one of the reasons why I chose chose CloudRig, is I had a I had a strong feeling that I would be able to work with them and build what we want quicker uh, with this company. So that's that's why it's different to me. We want high ambition customers who are going to push us to build a great product. All we're looking to do is put out tools that make contractors perform better. So, um, and we're, we're, we're useless. We are, we are worthless without our customers. So, uh, if you've got good ideas, come work with us. If you have bad, but, uh, but convincing ideas, you know, stay away. And if you have no ideas at all, call, come back in 5 years, um, when the product is fully baked. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any more questions? All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up. JP and Stan, thank you very much for your time today to present this information to our guests. Today's webinar has been recorded. A recording of this webinar will be made available on the nuclear.com website and in our YouTube channel over the next few days. And thank you for your time today to join us for this special industry webinar, 
and for supporting NUCA. Thank you for your time this afternoon, and please enjoy the rest of your week.